Oh hey, didn't see you there. What's going on everybody? My name is Ignite and I'm bringing you my very first YouTube video ever for Destiny and it's going to be uh, game mode control on Shores of Time and the Crucible where I give you a 42 kill performance and 21 kill, or kill streak to uh, start it off. And you know, I really thought that it would be really cool if I was able to start making some uh, Crucible guide videos and ways to teach, teach you and help better learn everybody about ways that you can optimize your character, optimize your loadout, and just better learn the mechanics in order to improve your overall performance so that you are no longer the last person on the scoreboard and you are helping lead your team to victory. All right, the first tip I have for you guys is a very, very basic one. Most of you probably already know it. Uh, it's called crouching. I know it's an unbelievable idea, um, but it's something that you can do. And the reason that it's very, very important and it's a very good tool that you, can ha that you have in your tool belt is it's something that can kind of take you off the radar. You can go under the radar, you can kind of go incognito, and you know, you can just really kind of take the enemy by surprise. It's been something that's absolutely saved my life multiple times. It's something that's allowed my team to regain control of an area that we once lost. It's a great way to kind of catch multiple enemies by surprise when they don't really expect you or when they think they've already cleared an area. Honestly, guys, it's probably one of the most useful tools that you can use and one of the most underutilized and also one of the most simplest. So I really encourage you to start being mindful of that. It's a really good tactical method to really help bring your team back to the top. The second thing I want to talk to everybody about is jumping. And you know, it's something that everybody uses every single game, but it's something that's really not understood as best as it should be by people. There's a lot of complications that come if you're jumping too much in a game in Crucible that can really kind of put you more in harm's way and not really help you gain the upper hand on an enemy. A couple of issues with jumping have to do with things like, you know, it's a lot harder to shoot while you're in the air. Just the physics and the mechanics of it is not something that comes natural to a lot of people. It's not just a laser beam while you're jumping. It does definitely change the way the way the gun shoots is definitely very, very different. Another thing is, is that when you're jumping, you get caught in this hang time that actually makes you a much easier target for people to be able to see and to take down, whereas, again, you're not in the best offensive positioning yourself. So, while many people do try to use jumping as a means to try to, you know, get out of a, a really hard, really challenging area or just try to get to safety, you know, it's not always the best option to use. However, that doesn't mean that there aren't good places to utilize jumping. You can use it to really quickly change your positioning as you're approaching a certain entryway or attacking a major area of uh, traffic in a different angle to try to catch enemies off guard that could give you the advantage of a gunfight or multiple gunfights. The third topic I want to talk about is one that, you know, I see a lot of people really struggle with and it's also a very, very important one, is just the natural layout of most maps. A lot of times, I think, a lot of people think that their gun skill and their just overall capabilities negate the reality that there are limitations to where you are and what you use in certain areas of the map. For example, there are areas on the map where auto rifles don't fare too well against scout or pulse rifles. There are places where auto rifles are going to outshoot shotguns just because of their range and their power. There are places where shotguns are going to destroy all of the other guns because, you know, you're in their range and that's where they rain terror. So what I would really try to challenge people to do is to make sure that they're not trying to use their guns outside of their capabilities. A lot of people, and I think it's a very psychological thing, is thinking that you're just able to do whatever you want, whenever you want, and in games like Destiny where people have certain guns that do give them certain favorable situations and stuff, you really need to make sure that you're just matching the playstyle with the gun that you're using. And so, again, I would really encourage you to be mindful of those those longer areas where snipers, where, auto, or where pulse rifles, and where... Um, scout rifles can really kind of rain terror. Shorter areas like middle caves or like little entryways where shotguns can really like dominate. Places where fusion rifles are a good median with high risk, high reward outcome and stuff like that. I mean there's just so much to be mindful of. So really make sure that you're choosing the weapon that gives you the most favorable advantage to your play style. And again, that's going to improve your performance. It's going to improve your team's performance if you're utilizing your skills in areas that benefit everybody. The fourth and fifth tips are kind of where it gets a little bit more mechanical, but it's stuff that a lot of people surprisingly don't really know about. It's stuff that I've kind of had to work at and better understand, and it's stuff that's really, really incredibly helped improve my performance in the Crucible. So for the fourth one is just heavy ammo. Heavy ammo is one of the most influential factors on the map. It's something that allows you to have the ability to take down multiple people at a certain time. It just gives you the power to be able to control so much more than you would normally be able to with basic ammo or with normal or with uh, special ammo. So it's something to be very, very mindful of. And a lot of people don't really understand how the respawn rate of it works. And after playing a couple games in Crucible and stuff like that, I finally figured it out. And so 
I'm going to share with you guys. Uh, the way that it works for heavy ammo is that the first one always spawns at 9 minutes into the game. So after the first 3 minutes, heavy ammo is there, it's present, you can pick it up. Now, the biggest thing is that um, a lot of people don't really know when it spawns after the fact. And that's for me to tell you right now. So basically the way it works is that since there are normally 2 heavy ammo boxes, the, the three minute timer that the first one is based off of restarts when both boxes are picked up. So, you know, if you want to test it out in the game yourself, just kind of be mindful of both boxes on the map. Just look at the one that you're trying to grab for, or you're trying to grab, or you're not grabbing, and just make sure you're, you're being mindful of when both of them disappear, and be ready for it to appear in three minutes after that time. So, again, it's such an influential, such a powerful piece. Make sure that you're trying to wait for your teammates to pick it up so you can maximize the people that have it. Try to pose a threat to your enemies to make sure that that's something that they don't have because, again, it is so influential, it's so massive. Really be mindful of that because if you can control heavy ammo, nine times out of ten, you can control the whole game. The fifth and the final piece of information is one that I'm pretty sure most of you will not know about. And it's, again, something that's going to be so insanely helpful because it's going to give you things like being able to restore your health quicker and it's going to make you faster being able to move around the map and utilize things a lot better. So this is just basically pressing start going, going to your attributes. And I'm going to show you uh, how it works right here in a second after this sick gameplay. And so what you're going to do is you're going to just press start and you're going to look at your character. And you can see that you have three things, armor, agility, and then you also have recovery. And so, you know, you can really manipulate these attributes and you can uh, basically go heavy. You want to go heavy on um, recovery and agility because armor doesn't really play much of a role because of the balancing of guns, which basically means that regardless of what guns you have, it's going to do the same damage void of any kind of armor setting you have. So you want to get rid of what you have on armor and you want to really just go heavy on recovery and agility to really help you kind of recover from the gunfights that you might have taken a heavy hit from and also to help you be able to manipulate and maneuver the map much more effectively. Anyways guys, that about does it for all the tips and tricks that I have for today. I really hope that you could contribute from everything I had to say. Um, you know, I really hope you also enjoyed the gameplay. I'd like to think that I played pretty well on this. As you can see, I ended up getting ending the game with uh, 42 kills. But yeah, let me know what you what you thought about the video. It's kind of hard to do a lot of editing in Destiny because you don't have that much control over the gameplay. You can't really do private matches or anything. So I thought that the best thing to kind of couple these topics that I wanted to talk about with was just like a nice gameplay in the Crucible. But yeah, let me know what you think. Let me know what kind of uh, tactics and things that you incorporate into your gameplay and stuff. And let's just have some discussion about it. Please let me know how you thought what you thought about the video. Like it, subscribe. Uh, follow me on Twitter if you want to, at underscore ignite, that's underscore I-G-K-N-I-G-H-T. But yeah, so thanks again so much for watching, and I hope you guys have a nice rest of your day. I can't wait to see you guys out on the battlefield, and uh, yeah, okay, well, see you later.